In taking that action, the committee seeks to support the economic recovery, promote a faster pace of job creation, and reduce the risk of a further decline in inflation that would prove damaging to the recovery. House Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke speaking this morning in Frankfurt. Well, that was the Fed Chairman defending himself, explaining himself to international critics as to why he's going ahead with a $600 billion purchase of treasuries. But that defense isn't flying domestically, at least not with our next guest. The Manhattan Institute's Nicole Galinas was one of 20, 21, 23 economists who signed that uh, open letter uh, to the uh, Chairman of the Federal Reserve. And Nicole, I want to ask you here, since you heard what was a long explanation, a defense really, from Ben Bernanke this morning. Has it changed your view of what he's trying to accomplish? Well, Margaret, I certainly have sympathy for the Fed chairman. He's clearly very worried about economic recovery. The problem is that trying to push more money through a still broken financial system to the real economy is not going to work any better than it has over the past two and a half years. These financial institutions still have an enormous amount of bad housing-related, other structured finance debt on their books. The Fed could have a much bigger in positive impact on the economy if it were to use its role as a regulator to require these banks to do their jobs as sound, prudent financial institutions, dispose of this bad debt in a legal, non-fraudulent, inconsistent manner, either through getting these foreclosures through. If they cannot do that, then writing the principle down so that we can finally get over this problem, find a bottom to these markets, and get on with life. Uh, well, it's interesting there because we've heard the criticism of QE2, but not many people come forward with an alternative plan. You are suggesting one, that one you just laid out there. Right, that's one. Another thing is we heard Kevin Warsh's speech of last week talking about how the Fed, and, and Warsh voted for QE2, mm -hmm. uh, I should say, but talking about how the Fed uh, cannot serve as a substitute for fiscal trade and regulatory policies. We have, the Fed should not try to be heroic in the absence of functional politics. Mm -hmm. Congress has a lot of work to do on the fiscal side. State and local governments, for example, pulling down economic growth because they continue to have these enormous double-digit percentage deficits. People expect tax increases on individuals, businesses. Can't go forward with economic growth with this burden still overhanging the economy. Lots of things that Congress should be doing. Yeah. The Fed should not be trying to use money. Yeah, but the, the linchpin in that is, is Congress getting something done and, and getting something through, which, I mean, the legislators are inherently slow in that democratic process. Well, so with the immediacy, though, and what with Bernanke laid out today, he went back and made historical references to say he's trying to avoid what happened uh, with the Great Depression, with U.S. and France, and, and he was talking about undervalued rates and, and gold standard right then. I mean, talk to me about what you heard the ex from the expert today and and what jumped out at you well, well, certainly no one wants years and years of stagnation and uncertainty. The, the Fed chairman wants what everyone else wants, of course, which is healthy recovery, healthy economic growth. But the economy cannot go forward with continued bad debt clogging up the financial system. We've seen over the past couple of years that attempting to push money through this system has only resulted in the money staying in the financial system, pushing up the price of bonds, pushing up Wall Street bonuses to record profits last year. Year, very high profits this year historically we've still got this divide between Wall Street and the rest of the economy the money is getting stuck in the financial system in order to fix the problem the, the Fed has to look at what continues to be broken in the financial system and right. we can we can see this in the depression as well you know 80 years ago the banks had to take a very long time to learn how to be banks again you had people who had failed you had institutions that had failed you yeah. needed new people new ideas new institutions to replace them the problem right now is a lot of our failed financial institutions, private sector institutions, continue to survive into the future. We have institutions that should have gone out of business still responsible for allocation of credit in the economy. Right. It makes the Fed's job very, very difficult. Right. Uh, but plenty of market participants would say there, there's one thing with theory and agree with some of your arguments. There's another thing to be out there and active today. They don't have the time for that. And we did see the Fed go through with $2 billion of that $600 billion in purchases just today. Thank you for coming on and, and explaining you, yourself. Uh, Dom, I want to hand it off.